Okay, Karen, you can go ahead and start. All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to, to the FY22 through FY2026 Neighborhood Revitalization Strategy Area, NRSA, second public informational meeting. I'm Terrain Norris. I am the Director of the Economic and Community Development Department for the City of Bessemer, and today is June 9th, 2022. I'm joined as part of this uh, informational meeting by our consultants, Ask Development Solutions Incorporated. Uh, and the City of Bessemer needs your input again. As a recipient of Community Development Block Grant Fund from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the city of Bessemer is, use, is planning to use a CDBG tool to support community revitalization. The city is proposing to submit a neighborhood revitalization strategy area or NRSA application to HUD for a defined target area within the city. The NRSA will provide additional affordable housing and economic opportunities and new and innovative ways to increase investments through the city CDBG funds and attracting other public and private funding. NRSAs can significantly impact communities by constructing new housing, expanding home repairs, improving neighborhood conditions, creating and retaining jobs and businesses in the area. And as you'll see a little later on, the boundaries of the target area that we have identified for this NRSA starts at 12th Avenue North to the West, 22nd Street North to the South, Dartmouth Avenue to the East, and 35th Street to the North. So generally, if you're in Bessemer, you know where the, the tracks divide North and South side. We've carved out an area that includes a little bit of both on both sides. And this is an area where we're looking to, um, to implement the NRSA. And so we have, been, we have been getting input from community residents, groups, and organizations within the target area for the last several months. And we have developed strategies and activities for consideration, and we need your input. So on that note, I want to welcome you all out tonight, those of you joining us on the meeting, and those of you who will be watching this once it's recorded and we're shared. And now I'm going to turn the rest of the meeting over to our partners with Ask Development Solutions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Torin. Um, thank you for uh, participants for taking your time to to attend. Um, I am Chris Plummer, and I'm the principal of Ask Development Solutions. My background is in um, federal grant management, um, technical assistance, um, real estate development, and I have as my, my colleague and partner here, Gary Causey. And Gary, if you can just um, introduce yourself. Yes, thank you, Chris. Uh, my name is Gary Causey. Um, similar to Chris, I have a background working with federal grants. I am a former US HUD field office director in the Jacksonville, Florida office, of which I was there for 30 years and uh, recently retired and uh, found myself wanting to stay involved and um, began doing some consulting work with Chris. And um, we have had the pleasure of working for several months now on this NRSA in Bessemer, among other projects. This one we find to be real exciting and welcome and to the meeting tonight. And thank you so much for attending. It's, it's really important that we hear from as many people as possible. Thanks. Thank you, Gary. So I just want to do a quick uh, review of the agenda. Um, we'll recap the purpose of the NRSA, although Turin did quite a bit of that in terms of his introduction. We'll tell you what we did specifically around community participation. Um, we'll talk about planning for the five-year period of the NRSA. Um, discuss our goals, strategies, partners, and so on. Uh, we look at some planned public-private sector NRSA investment. This, this is just a sample. Uh, you know, we'll have the full um, bill in the, in 
the NRSC plan itself, and we'll talk about um, the timeline for the NRSA and what uh, will be done in terms of ongoing accountability. Uh, so let me just uh, go to the next slide. So we'll be recording this session and we'll uh, keep your audio muted when you're not speaking. Um, we'll provide breaks uh, for you to ask questions. You can either put up your, your, your hand electronically and then ask a question, um, or you can put questions or comments in the chat box. Um, and you know, we welcome your ideas and participation. We want this to be a, a conversation with you to, to get your input on some of the ideas we are going to be highlighting tonight. Okay. So again, just by way of background, the City of Bessemer receives federal community development block grant funds from the U.S. Department of HUD. And these funds are typically used to create affordable housing, improve the living environments of um, areas that are primarily um, low income uh, areas, um, create jobs and other economic opportunities. And these are primarily to assist low income areas and low income persons, individuals and households, although the the um, NRSA does provide the opportunity to have um, a mix of incomes in a community, which um, tends to enhance the um, the community um, by bringing a mix of, of incomes and, and um, skills and talents and expertise to that community. So let me just. Um, pass over to um, Gary. Yes. Gary, you're on mute. I, think. I apologize. Sorry for that. So um, the NRSA uh, provides a greater flexibility under the CDBG program. Basically, there are opportunities to expand uh, activity investments that are otherwise capped under the regular program, and it allows you some more flexibility to uh, address your unique needs to the area. One thing that we do know from previous NRSAs is that they often attract significant leveraged private and public funding investments outside of CDBG. And we do want to point out that this application in no way constitutes an application for additional CDBG funds. This only allows you to concentrate your current resources and leverage other private and, and public funding as well into, this, into the NRSA area. It also provides an opportunity, as Chris mentioned, to provide assistance to households that are generally above what would be the limitations under the regular program, which is set at 80% of area median income. This provides for an opportunity to assist households up to 120% of area median income. It also provides opportunity to, prov to do job creation and retention. And that is an activity that, quite honestly, a lot of CDBG grantees across the country shy away from because there's so much documentation necessary in order to do activities like job creation. This allows you to do that with a lot less of that red tape and paperwork. Uh, and the cost per job is higher under an NRSA than it would be under a regular CDBG program. It also provides a, an excellent opportunity to bring in new partners, partners that can duplicate activities that the city can undertake themselves. But this is a chance for what we call community-based development organizations to carry out the same activities as the city would in an NRSA. It also allows for cities to expend more funds on needed public services 
within the area. Again, a higher amount can be spent on public services than in the regular CDBG program, which is capped at 15%. There is no cap under an NRSA. So these partnerships between the government, private sector, and community organizations, often uh, nonprofits, also resident small businesses, this, this provides for a great opportunity to implement a successful NRSA. Next slide. So some of the criteria, and, and it is, I would say rather challenging to design uh, and put together a, an NRSA that will meet this criteria in order to get HUD's approval. But again, HUD reserves approval of this, these NRSAs to areas which have a demonstrated need for uh, concentrated assistance. So the area must be primarily residential with at least 70% of the residents that are low to moderate income. The boundaries must also be contiguous. And excuse me, all residents can be served within those boundaries regardless of their income. At least 51% of the services must be uh, made available to low and moderate income households. But it does allow a mix of incomes, but the services themselves must benefit at least 51% of those must benefit low and moderate income households. This is a this is a sort of an ongoing process for the next five years. That community consultation and input, and when the community sees that maybe you need to make some uh, amendments or adjustments to the, the strategic plan then that's what will evolve over the period of the five years. And as we all know, conditions can change dramatically in, in just a short period of time. If you take a look at the home values, for example, right now, they're extremely, almost impossible to, to, to help new home buyers afford a, a home. Now that might not be the case three years from now. And so, the NRSA is designed to allow the community to come back and make changes and amendments where necessary. But this, this is also a great opportunity to leverage existing philanthropic and private sector investments. And I have to say, uh, Bessemer is poised to do exactly that. There is so much momentum already underway that in my opinion, there is going to be many more opportunities for private sector and philanthropic investments. Next slide. Okay. Uh, let me take over. I, I'll just take over okay. here, Gary. So just wanted to just following up on what Gary mentioned that um, the the interconnectedness of the efforts in the NRSA wanted to talk about what does it take to really um, pursue a neighborhood investment strategy. As you are aware, there are so many challenges in um, all of our neighbors, ac neighborhoods across the, the country, certainly in Bessemer, you, you have your, your challenges in the NRSA. And there is no one solution, no one agency that can make a successful and meaningful change. So this is a model that we have used, developed, you know, by a dear friend um, um, that talks about what are the elements that it takes to effectively deliver a neighborhood and, and a neighborhood investment and a neighborhood transformation strategy. First, it takes um, public sector capacity and resources. That's the government. It also takes not only that, there's not enough public money there. It also takes private investment capital and lending partners, banks, credit unions, and so on. It takes flexible philanthropic dollars that may be used as grants or may be used as low, low interest loans. It takes having 
the necessary information to make um, decisions at the community level. You know how many how many dilapidated units there are, how many vacant properties, you know, who owns them, you know, what they what the um the average value of homes, average cost, um that reliable data is important in, in coming up with solutions and being able to, to set a benchmark, a starting point, and to be able to determine um, a measure of success. When have you reached the success that you have established? It takes public policy and advocacy. So having um, people who will, whether at the local level, uh, city council, um, at the county level, at the state level, to advocate for something like low income housing tax credits to ensure that uh, more affordable housing, rental housing can be built within Bessemer and within the target area. And it takes intermediaries and implementation partners like um, community development corporation, for-profit, non-profit developers. And then it also takes neighborhood non-profit organizations offering development services, offering um, small business services, offering workforce development and job training. So it takes, um, it, it, it is said that it takes a village and this model really shows that it, it definitely takes a village in order to be effective in transforming uh, neighborhoods. And we hope that this is what this NRSA will do for the, the area in, Bess in Bessemer. And this will even serve as a model to maybe move on to another area in Bessemer and, and carry out the same strategies. Um, so the boundaries, um, Corinne mentioned the boundaries of the, the NRSA, and this is the boundary map. Um, and we, you know, we added what were some of the, the large employers, some of the community assets in, in here. It has a, a, a strange shape because we, we had to um, not include this industrial area here in the middle because of the HUD criteria. However, um, there are activities like expansion of um, the block facility there that will provide benefits um, to the, the NRSA that's, that encloses it. So maybe we'll then. And so we're going to talk about the the what we did in terms of um, community input. Um, community input, as as Gary mentioned, is is very important throughout this process. So up front, we we did as much as we could and continue to do to get your input as a community in terms of, of helping us to develop the strategies and so on. It also is going to take strong community leadership to drive the changes in the community uh, in the NRSA. And um, this is not just community input at the beginning of the process, but throughout the process, at least annually after the, the NRSA gets approved, there's a requirement to provide um, opportunities to, for input each year, at least annually. You can do more if you want. So what, what we did in terms of community input, we're having the public meeting. We participated in one meeting between the for-profit developer and the, the housing authority in those projects that they are going to be developed in, in, in and near the NRSA with the newspaper ads, flyers, social media. We had two online service surveys, and we have those surveys still open. So 
between um, now and I would say next week, Tuesday, we'll give you an opportunity to go, go online or to send the survey to, to your, your neighborhood, your residents, any businesses to participate in the survey. But you know, by definitely by Tuesday, we'll need to close them out. We have done interviews. Um, information has been posted on, on uh, Bessemer's website. And then we're gonna have a 15 day comment period once a draft of the application is ready. And we'll talk about that. You'll also have an opportunity when this is, goes before the city council to be able to um, comment on the, on the um, document itself. Um, Gary, do you wanna take over with the survey results? Okay. So we received uh, seven survey responses from residents and two from business owners. A total of 55 residents responded to the city's consolidated plan survey and when you combine the NRSA with the con plan survey results, that's, that's what we use to determine the priority needs within the area. A majority of the respondents were homeowners, mainly in the zip code of 35020. Most of the respondents indicated that they needed major repairs to their homes. Most residents felt that crime, a variety of topics or, or, or categories, including drugs, alcohol abuse, domestic violence, robbery, burglary, and gang activities have had a major impact on the NRSA area. And most residents felt that vehicle traffic problems had a moderate impact on the area. But the overall condition of the neighborhood was judged by most respondents as fair. So the priority needs that were identified from the surveys, this, are, this is not in any uh, rank order, but it sort of looks like it in some respects. Uh, substandard housing and major repairs to owner-occupied house, housing, as well as accessibility improvements, maybe for seniors or persons with, with disabilities. Uh, rental housing, affordable, de decent and safe rental housing, as well as affordable workforce housing was identified as a priority need. More funding for down payment assistance and closing cost assistance uh, is, a, is an identified need as well as infrastructure improvements in the neighborhoods like maintenance, drainage, uh, flood prevention, things like that, maybe including uh, uh, street improvements, which is the last item like curb cuts, repaving, maybe street lighting, as well as pu more public services for seniors, adults. And I heard a number of respondents who I've talked to uh, we're very interested in doing youth activities for, for young folks to have something to do in the summer, after school, just several youth activities was a priority. And substance abuse, crime and safety issues and transportation needs were also identified. And then the one constant for almost everything to work is job creation, that we need to really focus on ways that, number one, we can educate and train persons for job openings, and then also to try to promote as many job creation opportunities for low and moderate income persons in the area as possible. Next slide. So we have conducted fairly in-depth interviews with, with 10 agencies that were highlighted as uh, stakeholders or key stakeholders. And these, these persons represented a cross section of local organizations from many different areas or, or focuses. And the interviews were designed to collect information on what that organization does in the area, what their role is, and whether or not they have any planned future investments in the NRSA. Some people have investments coming that might not be located exactly in the boundaries of the NRSA, but it will draw 
uh, clients and residents from the NRSA. So we, we also were interested to know of that as well. We also were trying to determine the sources of funding for those investments so that if these groups are successful in uh, obtaining funds, it might be possible that other groups would be as well. We also uh, made an effort to identify potential bank and lending partners. We're looking specifically for a bank or a lending partner that has roots in Bessemer that uh, has sort of skin in the game that they really want to uh, be a part of this, the momentum that's building in the NRSA. We also looked at those types of organizations that have experience in assembling volunteers. Oftentimes, you, you may have just to use as an example, uh, Habitat has used volunteers quite often for their new construction and housing um, activities. But there are a number of organizations that, that depend on volunteers. So we're hopeful that we can assemble this cadre of volunteers that'll, that'll work in the NRSA as well. And the top three most pressing needs in the area uh, were affordable housing, the lack of affordable housing and the need for housing rehabilitation. The other primary uh, priority needs were some, do something about crime in the area. And the other prim, primary need was uh, activities. So public service needs and activities to, to help uh, both young and senior citizens. So the overall consensus of all interviews that were done revealed that there's a high degree of interest in pursuing the NRSA and that there's a strong existing commitment to foster the positive change and build upon the recent momentum that, that Bessemer's experiencing right now. This for me was an experience unlike any other where the level of community pride and strong belief that the conditions can change, can, can significantly improve if we can put together a very well-coordinated plan that there's no doubt in my mind that there are a number of organizations that are gonna step forward and lead uh, in this NRSA. The efforts to obtain uh, funding, we do believe will expand following the NRSA designation and approval by HUD. And, and again, the five most common challenges are crime reduction, the housing conditions. Another one was the lack of public facilities and parks, small business support and food access. Okay. So at this point, um, we'd like to find out if you know you have any suggestions or concerns any questions any, anybody else Okay, so um, the framework that we will use for the planning of the NRC is to um, come up with some goals. What is it that we want to accomplish over the five years and each year of the NRC period? How are we going to accomplish the goals that we have established? What strategies we'll use? And then what capacity will we need, uh, whether it's staffing, whether it's capital, um, whether it's um, partners, what capacity will we need to carry this act these activities and strategies, carry all these activities and strategies, and then what will it cost? And then the fourth is, is the measures. How are we going to know that we are making progress? 
the HUD requires that we specify some some milestones and um, do them over the five year period, some annually, some over the length of the five year period. Um, HUD is not um, locking the community into meeting all of those those metrics and um, all of, all of the, the, the goals. But it's recognized that things may change, but the, what HUD wants done is that um, as a community, you each year you get an opportunity to look at the progress you're making. The city will assess its progress. What are the reasons why progress may be being made in one year, one area, but not in another? Um, we're going to come up with some realistic um, goals and 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 met matrices, um, but you know you cannot um, make allowances for unforeseen circumstances. However, it's important that we are able to adjust the strategies, maybe try some new ways if we're not making progress, maybe shift um, shift around some of the goals. So how is flexible that there should be some progress shown there should be outcomes what type you know what types of changes are you seeing in the, in the community um physical changes you're seeing beautification you're, you may be seeing new houses going up you may um learn about jobs that have been created in the community so this is the planning framework that we're going to use during the, the five five year period so we want to now look at some of the strategies that we would want to pursue. The first one, as we mentioned, is affordable housing. So uh, the goal is to build units of affordable housing to, to increase housing, to repair existing owner-occupied single-family houses, especially for persons on fixed income who can't do it themselves. Uh, we look at acquiring and rehabilitating vacant properties for, for home buying or sale. And then during the period, the city wants to look at the possibility of doing, doing a feasibility study on developing a land bank. And what a land bank is, for those of you who may not be, be aware, is, is setting up an entity that will acquire and hold properties to ensure that they are not um, taken up by investors and to maintain them and then at some point in time um, use them for redevelop them for um, housing or even in some cases use them for recreational um, community gardens, recreational space, and, and so on. And so here we have the, you know, what the strategies will be. We'll have partner in terms of local and national developers, community-based development organizations, um, beneficiaries will be homeowners, um, special needs population, we'll be working with the public housing authority, um, and the outcomes will be deconcentrating poverty, um, increase affordable home ownership, um, increase financial opportunities for um, residents of the NRSA, um, attracting additional funding to the community, um, and improving the, the affordable housing stock. So what do you like about these strategies and you know what would be cons any concerns for you or what would you want to change or add to, to this? Let me just pause a minute and give you an opportunity to, to um, comment or, or ask questions. Make sure you're unmuted.
Anybody had any questions or comments? My comment is about the land bank. I think that is um, key to the affordable housing development. So it was good to hear that. What, sorry, could you repeat that? I, I didn't quite, quite catch what you were saying. I think you're on mute still, Melanie. I was excited to hear about the land bank. Okay, okay. So in terms of economic development, the goal is to create or retain jobs through financial assistance to small businesses or micro enterprises. And by micro enterprises, we mean um, small businesses that uh, have um, no more than five employees of which one of the employees is the owner themselves. Um, we wanna try to develop workforce um, development services and training, um, funding work, workforce development agencies to, um, to serve um, the NRSA. Um, as you can see, some of the partners, they, they, they're, there's going to be um, the construction of um, houses by the, the Redevelopment Corp. corp. Um, I'm trying to, I believe Habitat mentioned that they might do some development here. The Housing Authority will be doing development, so you will have a lot of new residents to the community. Um, the block, um, the, the, the block um, company will be expanding, so there will be opportunities for jobs here. There is a new um, some new businesses coming in, in Bessemer in general and even outside of Bessemer, Bessemer where there may be opportunities for NRSA residents to um, access jobs um, through that. So um, this is an opportunity to, to, to assist. Um, when the, the construction of housing is going to happen, um, on all levels, including the housing authority, there may be um, opportunities for construction jobs during the construction. And I, I believe the construction of the, the housing authority units will probably occur over the next five years. So there will be opportunities for residents to be able to benefit from jobs as well as um, you know, subcontracts for construction trades um, on those projects. Any, anything you, what do you like about the strategies? Anything you change? Anything you want to add to the strategies? Things you think, anything you think we might be missing here? So the, the third strategy bucket that we're looking at is to is neighborhood improvements. We want to reduce crime in the neighborhood. Um, you know, look at some ideas around maybe Crime Watch or neighborhood associations um, in the area. Um, we want to look at demolition of unsafe structures, increasing code enforcement. Um, beautifying some of the public spaces um, within the NRSA, creating community gardens, um, pocket parks, doing some tree planting, neighborhood signs. And then also with all of that activity happening with housing being development, being developed, um, job creation and so on, there's going to be the need for public services to be able to, to um, support um, those activities as well. So anything here that you 
you would like to change or add or any any comments on what you like about these strategies? Okay, so in terms of implementing the strategies, um, and as I as we mentioned before, you have an opportunity during the comment period, and when the NRSA application goes to the city council, you will have opportunities there to comment, send in your written comments, which will be um, included as attached to the plan um, as a part of this. So in terms of how do we implement this, the idea is to look at whether an implementing agency or look at a work group. So I think at this point, we are considering a, 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 an implementation work group being spearheaded by um, Tareen and his staff and um, made up of some of the stakeholders, the nonprofits, um, the, the uh, any for-profit entity, any community leaders, churches, um, other non other um, related nonprofit organizations, um, businesses, um, lenders, having a committee the committee that will will assist the city in terms of implementation and getting the word out and marketing the, the, the NRSA. That is the, 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 the strategy in terms of, of um, implementing the, the activities in the NRSA. The idea as well is to continue during the five years if there are new any new partners that may be recruited and would want to work with the city in terms of providing um, social services or being developers within the NRSA. Okay. Well, these are some of the planned investments that, um, and this is just a few of them um, in within the NRSA and within Bessemer for which the NRSA may be able to benefit from um, the economic, economic opportunities coming from um, these investments. And again, as I mentioned, there, will, there may be the need for more social services. If you're having increased number of houses for sale, there's a need for home buyer counseling, workforce development, training for new jobs, financial education for family, income and wealth building, trying to improve, you know, do budgeting, some of those activities, creating community gardens and community safety programs that um, to, to, to promote more cohesion in the community and um, um, make sure that the community, the stories, the, 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 the um, positive stories are told about the impact of the NRSAs. Um, so for the NRSA in terms of performance, performance measures, we'll have to identify how many houses we're, we're projecting to, to, to build. Policies and procedures will need to be developed to track performance. There will need to be monitoring, um, data collection. Again, as I mentioned, we have ongoing community input and reporting on the progress of the NRSA um, and getting public comments from you as to how things are progressing. So let me um, pause at this point again and ask if there are any um, questions or concerns or any suggestions.
and we encourage you to check there's a we'll, we'll provide this powerpoint presentation on the city's website you can click on the the, the, the the link here and it will take you to the community development department's website where there, there's more information. My name is Nancy. I have a couple of questions, if I may. Yes, go ahead, Nancy. Okay. Um, looking at the um, the boundaries that you have. I just want to regress just a little bit to be sure that I fully understand the 35th Street North to the north. These are areas of lands that are already owned uh, by the federal government or housing authority or what have you. Those are places where you are planning to build the affordable housing. Am I correct? Um, Corinne, could you? Could you respond to, to that in the context of the boundaries? Yeah. Uh, Should I go to the map? Yeah, if you don't mind, go back to the map. So, so it's actually the housing authority that's actually had some building plans in place, Ms. Wright. And yeah. it's part of the reason why we included this area in the NRSA is because they've had some plans to do some new housing construction within the general okay. area. And uh, it's a way to show different, uh, I guess, an expansion of the uh, affordable housing options within the NRSA and that we're bringing as, <laughs> as many resources into the area as we can. And it, I know the housing authority has talked about doing uh, maybe some new units at Southside Homes, I know. And they also had a proposal on the, uh, that was presented to the federal government for some more housing. But in addition to that, I know they've, they've mentioned the possibility of working with others in terms of doing some scattered site housing. If uh, there's some vacant lots around the city where they can have new homes be built. Okay. So would those homes, Terrain, would those homes uh, be similar to the ones that are already there to the left, or would they be more along the line of the habitat uh, homes? Are we talking the single family homes? Yes, um, the single family homes or the um, the ones that are across Dartmouth Avenue there to what, probably about 36th Street, I guess, mm -hmm. the bigger mm -hmm. houses. From what I saw and what I've seen with respect to what they're proposing, they don't look like what's already there. Um, okay. they would look, okay. Yeah, they would look similar to maybe some projects you've seen in some other cities where some of the housing authorities have gone in and renovated um, some of their mm. housing units and done that. In terms of any single family units, I don't think we've gotten as far as, as what Habitat did over on 7th Avenue. But I know what, Seb, what Habitat did, and Melanie, you may be able to chime in over on 7th, was they tried to match what they built, and they do this everywhere, mm -hmm. so that it flows yes. with what's already in the community. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Melody, did you want to chime in? No, I'm trying to answer the question the way I would have. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any any other questions, Ms. Ryan? No, I think that's all I have. Mm. So we we still you know, we still want to hear from you. As I said, you know, we leave up the link until next week on um, Tuesday. Um, we are planning to complete the draft NRSA application by um, June 15th. Um, and then we'll put it out for public comment um, for 15 days um, to the, the end of June. And um, it will be um, 
incorporated with the, the city's um, annual action plan and an amendment to the consolidated plan and would the idea is to submit this to HUD by um, the by July 15. And you know we're estimating that HUD may take three months or so to to um, approve this and then we will be moving into uh, implementation. Um, so at this point, um, any any final questions uh, or any final thoughts? Uh, no, we, we thank you for for your uh, taking the time and for participating. Um, Sorry, and I don't think you want to close out. Uh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, I just want to thank you for those of you who joined us this evening. As he said, he we are still taking comments. Uh, if you get a chance, if you haven't filled out the survey, please do so. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here in economic, the Economic and Community Development Department. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Y'all have. Thank Everyone you. have a great evening. Have a great evening. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.